Hey, what's, what's happening? It's Joel Brown here from AddictedToSuccess.com. Right now, I'm hanging out with Ty Lopez, multi-millionaire investor, super smart, intelligent, <laughs> impressive dude. Unshaved. I'll tell you that. <laughs> That's what I am. That's my best uh, intro. <laughs> so look, we're hanging out here at Ty's new office on Sunset. We're hanging out with his uh, Ferrari and Lamborghini. <laughs> Talking cars, man. Talking cars, talking self-development and reading books, all that right now. And uh, actually, we were upstairs with Ty about 15 minutes ago, and he was touching on a really great subject. Uh, if you want to fill us in on a little bit on that, man, about winning in your arena. Right. Fill us in on that, man. I think it's I was just saying, you know, what happens with all of us, we get this mental map where we adopt what other people's definitions of winning is. So I went to the movie Jurassic World the other day with some film friends and uh, of course they're all like bourgeois kind of stuck up and they said, oh that was the worst movie we ever saw and I said, well, you got to ask yourself what was the director or producer trying to accomplish with Jurassic World? They're trying to make a family entertainment movie. So by that definition of winning, they did well. They already made half a billion dollars. And the same way when it comes to business, entrepreneurship, uh, I, believe, I like Warren Buffett, I follow a lot of his general principles, but what he won, the way he lives in Omaha, Nebraska, you know, blah, 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 it's, it's not what I would consider winning. So be careful if you, uh, be careful with the natural ten tendency to adopt other people's definition of winning. So for example, if you study billionaires, which I think you should, some billionaires, I look at their life, I'm like, I wouldn't want to be them, I wouldn't trade for them for all the money in the world. Uh, sometimes you see people that are uh, super good shape. Like, let's say Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, I was telling you, I got to, went to a movie the other day with him uh, and got to talk to him for a while. And not every dude wants to spend six hours in a gym and be super muscular. So you can learn general principles of health from Arnold, but don't adopt his definite. Because for him, Arnold Schwarzenegger accomplished what he wanted. It was, I think, six or seven time Mr. Universe. That's winning for him. I don't think for you, winning in life is being Mr. Olympia, right? No. <laughs> That's not hard. You can appreciate it though. But right. Yeah. But the it's harder thing winning. is, because it's easy to say what's not winning, the hardest damn question in the world is, what is winning? And that one, I meet one out of 10,000 entrepreneurs that actually can answer that. And you should do it down to the specific, like, where is winning for you to live? Like, if you were winning at life, would you live in California? Would you live in Australia? Would you live in London? Uh, when it comes to cars, you know, uh, we're talking about, I live with the Amish. That's a simple life. I lived there when I was younger. When I was living at the Amish, I didn't care about Ferrari, Lamborghini, Maserati, like you see here. I, for me, winning was having a simple life. So you gotta ask yourself that. And the key thing, there's two things, like I said. One, you can learn from people who have a different definition of winning. Because some people will go, well, I don't want to be like Arnold Schwarzenegger and he's not perfect, so I don't want to learn anything. That's stupid. That's one extreme. And the other extreme is saying, I like Arnold Schwarzenegger, so I'm going to do everything that he did. I'm going to try to be an actor. I'm going to try to be this. So I think humans are very diverse in what's winning for them. I think most people want to be healthy. They want to make money, enough to have financial freedom. They want to find love and social relationship, and they want to have you know, happiness in their brain. So I think that's a universal winning, but the specifics of what it looks like, you gotta figure that out for your own. And the way I do it, I take a little trip once a month, I go to Palm Springs or San Diego, and I, I just take a notepad and I write out winning, like I have two columns. Winning looks like this, it looks like, for me, let's say a house in more than one place. A house in California, a house in London, that's winning for me. Mm. Losing, you gotta write the losing call up because there's a lot of, so like losing for me, we were talking about this, about yeah. people in self-help who do conferences and there's all 60 year old people in the audience. That would be losing to me because I wanna influence a younger generation. But it might not be losing for you. So my specific is conferences or, or programs or ideas that reach people under let's say 30. So make that list and it'll shock you. This is what, if we had a good education system, this is what you and I would have done from age six to age 18, but unfortunately we didn't get that, so try now when you're older. That's it, find your arena, win in that arena, know what losses really mean to you, and get clear on it, right? That's the thing, exactly. a lot of people aren't clear. And it changes yeah. over time, that's why I said you gotta do it a couple, once a year at least, update it. Yeah, that's it, awesome man, great advice. Cool man. Alrighty. Yeah, talk to you guys soon. Catch you later.